Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, The Teaching Show. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Please don't forget to like this video. Thank you. So let's get started. So uh, in these uh, series of video lectures, we are trying to develop a course on process calculation. And uh, today, uh, main focus will be on material balance without reaction on continuous unsteady state processes. So last two videos we had seen steady state processes. Now I'm shifting my focus on unsteady state processes. So let's quickly see what is the general balance equation. I have written this general balance equation in differential form because this is a continuous process. So input is basically the rate at which the material is coming into the system or that is crossing the system boundary plus generation due to chemical reaction minus output that is the material which is leaving per unit time minus consumption that is the material which is getting consumed per unit time because of reaction that is equal to accumulation that is the rate of change of material within the system okay so basically it will be given in a differential form so accumulation term will be if i am taking a total mass mass balance or total material balance then accumulation term will take the form of dm by dt that is the rate of change of mass within the system okay so unsteady state so accumulation term is now not zero but generation and consumption term will be zero because now Again, we are assuming that there is no chemical reaction that is taking place. So, my general balance equation for continuous unsteady state problems will take the form of input minus output that is equal to accumulation. So, we will directly start solving some problems and then uh, I will let you know how to apply this form of general balance equation for unsteady state system. So, let's start. First problem I have taken today is of an overflow from a water tank. Now it's given that water enters a 2 meter cube tank at a rate of 6 kg per second and it is withdrawn at a rate of 3 kg per second. The tank is initially half full that is it is filled up to 1 meter cube. Okay. Now first question is, is this process continuous batch or semi batch? So you can easily say that because material is crossing the system boundary, this is not a batch process. This is also not a semi-batch process because you know, there is only one stream. One stream is going in and one stream is coming out. So definitely this doesn't come under semi-batch process. This is definitely a continuous process. Now let's see whether it is a transient or unsteady state or whether it is a steady state. So what we see is that 6 kg per second of water is going in and 3 kg per second is coming out. So the rate of input is higher than rate of output. So where is this extra water going? Definitely it will be getting stored in the tank. So the amount of water in the tank must be increasing with time. So definitely there is something which is changing with time. Now, and what is the definition of steady state? Nothing changes with time. Okay. Since the amount of water within the tank is increasing with time, so this is a transient state transient state problem or unsteady state problem okay now the question is asked how long will the tank take to overflow so let's now calculate that by the way i have taken this problem from the book felder and this is the unsolved problem 4.1 so let's see first of all what we have learned let's make a flow chart so i have made my unit this is my tank 6 kg per second of inlet stream, 3 kg per second of outlet stream. This, the capacity of the tank is 2 meter cube. Initially, it is half full. Water in the tank is 1 meter cube. That is, if I just multiply it with the density, what I get is, the, initially the water is 1000 kg. Now, I have to find out the time required to overflow the tank. So, what we have done? First of all, we have made a fully labeled flow chart. Okay. Next, what we have to do? I have to find out what is the time in which the tank starts overflowing? So when the tank starts overflowing, how much will be the amount of water in it? It will be completely full. That is, the water will be 2 meter cube. 
or it will be 2000 kg so i know the final state so initial state is 1000 kg of water in the tank the final state just before the water starts overflowing from the tank there will be 2000 kg of water in the tank okay so what i am going to do is i will write out my general material balance that takes the form as input minus output is equal to accumulation input stream is 6 kg per second output stream is 3 kg per second and my accumulation term is dm by dt okay that is the rate at which the mass of water is increasing in the tank that will be equal to the difference of input and output so i've just rearranged this equation so dm by dt is equal to 6 minus 3 that is 3 kg per second i separate the variables integrate it so initially at time 0 there is 1000 kg of water at time t just when it starts overflowing the water inside the tank is 2000 kgs so i take um, i do the integration apply the limits and find out what is the time t so the tank will overflow in 333.3 seconds let's take another problem now this is a uh, problem is about failure in a dilution tank so I will first read out the problem for you. So there is a, uh, we all know that for pulp paper manufacturing unit, you have a craft process which requires this certain process. It requires 10% NOH by weight uh, at a flow rate of 1.65 kg per second. So we are using a dilution tank in which two streams are going in. One is 50% by weight of NOH stream and then another stream of pure water is coming in. These two streams are getting mixed in a tank which has a capacity of 1900 liters. Uh, okay, now during this operation, what happens is that the flow rate of or the inlet flow of NaOH stops suddenly because of some reason, maybe the pump failure or something else. Okay, but the dilution water keeps on entering in the tank. So it has been asked that you assume a perfect mixing uh, taking place within the tank and the volume uh, of the material in the tank remains constant you have to calculate the time which is required for the effluent concentration to fall to 8% so initially when everything was continuing in a steady state you were producing a stream which had 10% NOH and it was coming out at a flow rate of 1.65 kg per second now once uh, one of the inlet flow streams it is stopped still you will you are you know, you know taking out the same 1.65 kg per second of stream but since there is no inlet of NaOH and only water is now coming inside the tank so the concentration within the tank as well as in the affluent stream will decrease okay so let's just start uh, what i told you is that first of all you have to make a flow chart so i have made a dilution tank its capacity is 1900 liters this is first stream which is coming in that is 50 percent NaOH solution second stream is water which is acting as a diluent because i'm just diluting a 50 percent stream to generate a 10 percent NaOH stream okay uh, outlet stream is coming at 1.65 kg per second now these are the things which have been given uh, you are asked to assume that the density of this NaOH solution is same so because this is a dilute solution so it, it has 10% or 8% the density will not change appreciably so I am taking a constant density of 1100 kg per meter cube second we are assuming that this is a perfectly mixed tank so whatever is the concentration of NaOH within the tank it is same as the concentration in the effluent stream now uh, it is said that inflow of 50% NOH stream fails. Now find out the time which is required for effluent concentration to fall to 8%. Okay, let's start with this problem. Before there was failure in this stream, everything was running at steady state. So this dilution tank was operating at steady state. So there was some steady state value of the flow rate of this stream, some steady state flow rate of this stream which was giving me a steady state flow rate of this outlet stream which was 1.65 kg per second okay so first of all what i will do is i will analyze this problem 
using steady state balance and find out what is m1 dot and m2 dot okay uh, since the dilution tank is 1900 liter in capacity if i multiply it with its density then i will get the mass of solution within the tank which comes out to be 2090 kg of solution okay so let's first apply our steady state material balance now what you see over here is that uh, if i take water balance see i have taught you in last video that you have to start taking uh, first of all find out how many independent balances are there there are two components NaOH and water so there will be two independent balances okay which one to solve first let's see if i take water balance water is there in all three streams okay so if i write water balance there will be m1 dot and m2 dot so two unknowns so so let's uh, start with NaOH balance it is only uh, it's it has only one unknown that is m1 dot so it's simple you write 0.5 m1 dot is equal to 0.1 m dot 3 and you get the value of m1 dot next it's easy you have to take either water balance or you can take an overall balance i'm taking overall balance and finding out the that the inlet flow rate of water is 1.32 kg per second now what's happening at any time say t equal to 0 okay this was the case m1 dot is 0.33 m2 dot is 1.32 kg per second and m3 dot is 1.65 kg per second at this instant this stream fails okay so only now water is entering and solution is coming out okay let's see now the mass in the tank will decrease at a rate 0.33 kg per second because now this stream is not coming okay see this stream is not coming so now what will happen is that the mass will start decreasing at a rate of 0.33 kg per second initially there was 2090 kg of mass in the tank so it will decrease at a rate of 2090 minus 0.33 into t at any time t let's say that the concentration of NaOH in the tank is x okay that is x mass fraction so when if we are assuming that this is perfectly mixed tank then the uh, concentration in the effluent stream should also be x okay so now this will start falling from 0.1 to some value okay let's take NaOH balance now so we will apply now because things are changing so it's no more a steady state problem so now i will apply my uh, balance equation in the form of unsteady state so input minus output is now equal to accumulation input of NaOH is zero because that the stream which was carrying NaOH into the system it has now stopped flowing into the tank so input is zero output is again uh, the outlet flow rate is 1.65 kg per second so uh, this is fixed but its uh, mass fraction is changing so i'm just saying it is uh, the output is 1.65 x that is equal to dmx by dt uh, what is m m is the mass of solution within the tank and x is its mole fraction at any instant of time so the amount of NaOH at any instant of time will be m into x and then the rate of change of NaOH in the tank will be equal to dmx by dt applying chain rule what we get is m dx by dt plus x dm by dt since dm by dt will be very small i know that dm by dt is what 0.33 x is of the order of 0.1 so if i multiply it comes out to be an order of 0 0.03 something like that so we can neglect this okay and i'm just separating the variable integrating it between the limit at time uh, t equal to 0 my outlet concentration was 0 0.1 at time t at certain time t i have to calculate uh, the time t when the concentration will fall to 0 0.08 so applying these limits i integrate this equation and find out the value of t that comes out to be 276.4 seconds okay so this is very simple uh, you can also check the validity of this assumption uh, by finding out uh, how much uh, mass decreases in the tank by multiplying 0.33 with this time t and then multiply it with say 0.1 you will find out that this uh, term is really uh, very small okay so hope uh, you like this video thanks for watching and please uh, uh, if you like this video click the like button thank you so much